My name is Alexandra Jamison. You can call me Alex. And I was the co-creator of the documentary Supersize Me. And my most recent book is Women, Food, and Desire. And the subtitle is Embrace Your Cravings, Make Peace with Food, Reclaim Your Body. So we made Supersize Me 10 years ago now. And this little indie film that we made exploring, you know, my background in nutrition and cooking and Morgan's background in filmmaking and rabble rousing, we brought those things together to create this little movie that just examined like, what is the fast food culture doing to us? And it was the right time for a film like that. And it really was a, a place for a lot of different movements to put their energy and focus on. So the movie premiered in over 25 countries in the next year and I was able to write my first book about healing Morgan's body after he got really sick on the McDonald's only diet. So that book came out and then I wrote a few more books over the next few years and now we have a little eight-year-old son that we co-parent. So that's my biggest project all the time is him. When we made Super Size Me, I was a vegan chef and over 10 years that diet worked great for me and my body and my son was raised vegan for the first few years of his life and then my body started to change and I started having some hormonal imbalances I started getting really exhausted and I couldn't fix these problems with the vegan framework and I started craving meat and I fought it for a couple of years and then I realized what my body was asking me for was actually what I needed and I started adding animal protein back to my diet. And here I am a few years later, those imbalances have gone back to normal. And it was a really, it was a tough transition because we're not taught how to listen to our bodies. And we have a lot of rules and restriction around what we eat. And of course I had written three books on being a vegan expert and cooking. So it was really hard to re-identify myself. But that's what I'm trying to do now is help people learn to listen to their body. So Women, Food and Desire comes out in January and it's really fun. And I try to dive deep into the root causes of cravings. There's four causes. There's bacterial, nutritional, emotional, and physical. And we are craving creatures and you can't be a non-emotional eater, but there are things happening in your body that you don't always listen to. You know, we are 10 times more bacterial than we are human. So those bacteria crave certain foods, especially simple sugars. And you may need to rebalance your bacteria in your gut first, but you also need to look at what are the nutritional cravings your body is asking you for? What nutrients might you be missing? When was the last time you had a blood test that showed you how your vitamin levels are? And then what's your physical body asking you for? We forget that we're animals. And we crave movement and physical pleasure and sensuality. And we get so restricted and tight in our lives. We're always at the desk, we're always in our car, we don't have enough fun in our bodies. So I take people through those four root causes and how to heal them naturally. To narrow down one superpower, I would say uh, making connections. And that can be anything from connecting people from you know different areas of my life like I think they would be great together on a project or making new friends that's one of the best things when you introduce two people and they really hit it off and they go do something together but also just making connections in terms of ideas like I've been bringing together functional nutrition and positive psychology and how there's really a gap in between what doctors and nutritionists are doing for the body and what we know about positive psychology and how the brain works and how we can help people think and feel their way out of a stuck place or out of ill health. And I think we need to do the two at the same time. So I'm trying to bring in lots of different areas to this same issue. I'd say my parents. My parents are amazing. My mom just passed away this year, but she was an artist. She was a master organic gardener. She had her own radio show for 11 years on organic gardening when I was a kid. And my father was a high school principal for 25 years and they were really passionate about what they did. And they were always helping people. They were really involved in the community. I mean, our, our house was just filled to the brim with books and they, they were just really lovely, really heart-centered people and really hard workers. So they're my biggest inspirations. Something I do every day is stretch. 
and it's something I don't always go to like a yoga class or you know sit down on my yoga mat but I I've had scoliosis since I was a kid and if I don't constantly stretch and move my body and get up from my desk and move around I will start to get tight and over time I'll start to have pain so just this you know constant movement I encourage people to work in pomodoros or like 20 25 minute increments and then take a physical five minute break where you get up and you stretch and that's actually a great tip for people who want to like be more focused and more productive when you move your your brain learns better you know we release something called BDNF in the brain and that's what actually allows the body and the brain to make better faster neural connections so when you get up and you stretch just for a few minutes every 20 25 minutes it helps me be more focused because I can I can get a little excited by different ideas and to really stay on track